and your grace and that is more than enough for me. My first degree after my education degree was in spiritual direction and I was a student in the spirituality program and my for first course was the history of grace and spirituality. And I got the book that we were supposed to get Xavier Leon DeFore, Biblical Spirituality on Grace. It was about this thick of a book. And I thought, wow, what are we going to do in this class on grace? That there's so much, you know. And of course, I thought it was going to begin with, bless us, O Lord, and these I gifts. <laughs> Nothing at all about that. Jesuit, John Sheets, famous Jesuit, long years in heaven. Started the very first class. And I was a nervous wreck being in graduate school, thinking what on earth is going to happen. That was way before computers. I just sat there with a little strip of paper and wrote down every word that he said that I didn't know. And then I'd go to the library and look it up. And he gave the first lecture on grace. And I think of it every day. It was a profound experience of a different God than I ever knew. A God of abundance, of love, and he was on fire with that love. From our baptism, we are in that experience of grace, and it is in our freedom that we choose to remove ourselves from that. And no matter what we do, God will always be in the center of that. And from that grace of the spiritual exercises, the movement of the spirit of the exercises is to believe in the breath, the depth, and the height, and the love of God. And in the exercises, standing humbly, our sitting, our praying, our doing prayer periods, is that no matter what happens, no matter how great the sin that we feel we're carrying, there is total freedom total grace and only love. So I think for a few minutes just to think of a time when we know we've really been forgiven or somebody came to us and said we've been forgiven. God doesn't even get caught up in that. God is only grace of all I see in you is pure love and pure goodness. This is my 40th year of listening, of doing spiritual direction. And I would say, of all the people that have walked through my little door, which is in this neighborhood, <laughs> there's one question, thought, desire of every person that has come in. What do you believe that might be? Anybody want to take a guess? Am I loved? Am I loved? Am I loved? Am I good enough? I did this when I was 18, and I don't know how God could love me in this. All of us have the darkness, and all of us have the light, the stars. You are stardust. You're made from that cosmic gift and grace is to believe that no matter what, we are in that love. 
Thich Nhat Hanh says, our true home is the present moment. Once we touch the deep infinite peace that resides there, then we will be healed and transformed. It is not a matter of faith, it is a matter of practice. Once we feel that deep infinite love of our God, all healing can take place. She was instantly healed. It's like all the healing stories in scripture. The woman that hemorrhaged for 12 years just had a cloak, touched Jesus' cloak. The blind man, whatever is your favorite healing story should be your healing story. If you've made the exercises, then you've had many healing stories. How has God touched you in a way that you just touched the cloak of the divine? And maybe today it's going out and touching a flower and saying thank you to God and believing that all can be healed. And what breaks my heart is when people carry something over and over and believe it cannot be healed. So the grace is there for us. The grace to believe. How am I open to receiving that? The first way is by benevolence. That loving, looking deeply into the soul of another. When your parents saw you for the first time, that's benevolent glancing. And when God created you in God's image and God's likeness, that is benevolent glancing. And when you look to someone and you see through their eyes the gift that they are, that is benevolent glancing. How do we see? We look at a flower, we look at a tree these days and we go, ah, why aren't we doing that with one another? Our world needs the exercises in this kind of love more than ever. And it's very hard sometimes to pray for someone that has the opposite point of view of worldview that you have. Try it and turn your heart. The second way is compassion. Compassion first for yourself. To believe in that divine goodness. Look in the mirror and say, wow God, you did a good job. Can you look in the mirror and see God radiating love to you? Having compassion. Having compassion for someone that drives you crazy. Having compassion for someone that you love. Experiencing that kindness. The third way is through love. We're all called to be lovers. And you in saying yes to this program and yes to the exercises is that deep invitation of love. We're called to love, we are love. And the fourth way is freedom. The exercises are the total invitation of freedom. The three humility experiences are that invitation. Discernment is freedom. Grace is the divine invitation that keeps that moving over and over in our lives. Louis Avery says it a little bit different in three points. Number one, it's all giving gifts. God is giving us a gift. We're giving. Creation is going over and over and over in those gifts. And it's all through love. The second is presence. Where the lover is present to receive the gift, and then when you, give the, when you receive that gift, it's only natural that you want to share it. You know, the transfiguration. They wanted to put three tents up and stay there. Haven't you had experiences that you just want to stay there? 
oh, come on, God, can't we have another good day like this? It's all about mission. It's all about moving forward. And the third way, cooperative interaction. Loving that interaction that you are never alone. What is invited over and over is a co-mingling of the spirit. And what I truly believe that the, the rays of the light that come through these experiences are the light for the journey. Cosmic Christ is the grace that holds all this together and invites us to be totally a part of it. The Merriam-Webster dictionary of this is the unmerited divine assistance given to humans and to creation for their regenerative spirit. This three graces is a Greek mythology, which is faith, hope, and charity. My favorite statue at the garden is the three graces. It's in the little woodland garden on the right by water, and there's a bench called Madeline's Bench right by it. I didn't donate it but it's my bench. And I look at three graces often. And if the three graces don't speak to me, I go out and speak to the angel that's pouring forth water. So the grace is there. Where are your touchstones of this experience? And today on this Easter Saturday, what does the resurrection mean for you and invite you at this time in your life? The Easter story is the story of the exercises. It is the story of the grace of, it's the Paschal mystery. And maybe you're not at resurrection yet. Maybe you're still in Lent. You might be going through a very dark time right now in your heart. Maybe something's difficult. Where are you inviting that grace to support you, love you, care for you. And in that whole oneness, the gift of this is always there. And Marl Lindbergh says that suffering does two things for us. It teaches us to be incredibly more vulnerable and more loving, or it keeps us locked in our own misery. That's the gift of the exercises as well. The gift of the exercises to totally transform our life. And again, from the exercises, paragraph 231, it consists in a mutual sharing of goods. For example, as a lover, one gives and shares with the beloved something of one's own personal gifts and some possessions. So too, the beloved shares a similar way with the lover. In this way, one whose knowledge shares it and one who gives, all is true honor, riches, and so on. In love, one always wants to give to the other. God cannot stop giving to us because God is so in love with us. I beg for the gift of intimate knowledge of all the goods for which God lovingly shares with me, filled with gratitude. I want to be empowered to respond just as totally in my love and service. It's all about the mission. It's all about the love that when people look at you, they don't see you, they see the divine. They see and catch your spirit of love, pure love, pure grace, and it is more than enough. God has promised to give you more than enough. And in this beautiful season of Easter Saturday, I want to read a Mary Oliver poem as I end. That the earth gives us all that we ever need, and we have the privilege of walking that earth, which is the greatest grace. 
And the poem is called Why I Wake Early. Hello, sun in my face. Hello, you made the morning and spread it over the fields into the faces of the tulips and the nodding morning glories and into the windows of even the miserable and the crotchety best preacher there ever was. Dear star, that just happens to be where you are in the universe. To keep us from ever darkness, to ease us with warm touching, to hold us in the great hands of light. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Watch now how I start the day in happiness and kindness. Watch as you live this grace of the gift of the cosmic. The gift of the exercises is a constant companion, a constant love story. I've given the exercises many, many times. They have never failed. It's a love story. And being privileged to be on that love journey, I thank you for the privilege of being here this morning because whenever I speak about the exercises, it totally renews my love for the exercises. And thank you for saying yes to the ones of you that are new in this journey. It will be a great gift in your life. And thank you for living that grace and believing in the Easter story. So it was an honor and a privilege to be with you today to see the divine through all of your eyes. So if you'd like, I brought some copies of the poem as a little gift, an Easter gift to you. And I humbly thank you.